Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. This is episode nine of Cozy Corner with Courtney. I'm your host, Courtney. I knit, and in this episode, I can also say I crochet, and I've got a lot of exciting things to show you, so let's get right on into it. Um, okay, so in the since the last episode, it's been a little over a week, and I do have a lot to show you, thanks in part to the fact that on Tuesday of last week, I believe, and I'm recording this on a Wednesday, so it's been about it's been a week and a day, I learned to crochet. Now, this is one of those skills that I'd wanted to do for a while, and honestly, maybe I just didn't have the proper amount of brain space, um, whatever you wanna call it, uh, to, get, to really get focused on it and do it. And I'm so thankful that, um, you know, it's been eight days, I guess maybe a nine, maybe I started looking at like the magic ring tutorial by Bella Coco like late at night on Monday night. And, um, and then I thought like I saw her magic ring tutorial and I saw the single crochet tutorial by Bella Coco. And then I thought, you know what, like I can kind of do this. And for some reason, I guess, I hadn't really been able to focus on those videos before. I can debate with myself the level of understanding I had concerning crochet uh, prior to, to now in 2024, um, because I definitely had like looked at some videos. I had worked with someone um, in a yarn store who was trying to teach me, and I had like two lessons with her. and. Honestly, I think that back then I had kind of lofty goals, maybe, but, um, and not to say that this time picking it back up again, my goals weren't lofty, okay, because as soon as I watched those two videos, the magic ring and the single crochet by Bella Coco, which I'll link both of those below so that you guys can watch them too. As soon as I watched those two videos, I then looked up an Amigurumi tutorial. I guess I was recommended it on YouTube, um, and it's from All From Jade, and I'll link this one below as well. But um, I'm telling you guys, with those three videos, it was um, it was very much. I felt like I had everything that I needed to know, and um, really, you know, if you know the magic ring, you know single crochet, you know. Jade, I think, as I was watching her uh, tutorial, I saw her do slip stitch. I can't remember if that was in the Jellyfish Babies or not, but I, I've seen a few of her tutorials now. And I'm telling you, if you want to learn crochet, this is something that you can definitely do with these three videos that I will link down in the description below so that you can check those out. Um, yeah, I, I guess before though, in 2022, I had like these lofty goals of wanting to make, um, I'm not gonna get into it too much, I, Granny Square a uh, cardigan <laughs> or um, <laughs> a sweater. Like, you know how, and I feel like they're still very popular, but especially a couple years ago, I feel like everybody wanted like a jacket or a vest made of the Granny Squares. So, you know, I feel like now after having done like more simple amigurumi and things for like the past week or so, and actually I don't know if this would be considered more simple than a granny square. If you know more about crochet, you can let me know in the comments below. Also, I don't think we need to argue or like opine over the difficulty or simplicity of something because really it's all relative and what's more difficult or simple for you. Personally, I see like I can see a huge change like from my learning ability now versus two years ago though. And wow, like wow. Okay, <laughs> like you know, we're all growing as people and that's amazing, but um wow. <laughs> like anyways, I I'm so glad, I'm so thankful I was able to watch these three videos and like on Monday night when I watched them, like basically after I watched these three videos, 
I said, okay, I know what to do. And then on Tuesday was when I made my first amigurumi. So I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna put those guys up on the screen. I don't have them with me. Um, all right, so between Tuesday of last week and Tuesday being yesterday, so in in that week time frame, I think I made about 14 amigurumi. And you might think, oh, that's a lot, but like, and it kind of is, you know, but um, everybody's like capacity to make things is unique to them. So I don't know. I'm not, again, not going to opine on like whether something is a lot or not. Um, so yes, the jellyfish babies were my very first amigurumi. Um, I love these guys so much. Um, their little eyes remind me of Beanie Babies because Beanie Babies, I think, had those little eyes, like, and I know now, like, that same company has the animals with, like, the sparkly eyes, but back when I was growing up, Beanie Babies were a lot more simple and they weren't so, like, soft and fluffy. They were just very simple, and so maybe that's what kind of reminds me of the Beanie Babies with these guys. They're so sweet, being so sweet, and I just love them. I love them so, 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 so much. Um, yes, <laughs> it was very hard for me to let them go, but, um, I, I know it was very hard for me to let them go. I did make them with the intention of starting a business. And, um, so I, I guess these guys are now little seeds to help my business start. <laughs> um, and yeah, love you. Love you jellyfish babies. Okay. Um, the next one that I made, I think I made later, I think I also made on Tuesday is the octopus uh, baby, koi octopus. And um, I think this is the octopus number one. Wait, no, this is octopus number three from All From Jade. Basically on his tentacles, like I didn't do them the exact correct way, but it's fine because I just think he came out so adorable with his little eyes looking up at you like, oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> and I love the fact that he's like this beautiful blue. That uh, colorway is Irish Mint and it's in, he's in it in Hobby Tweed Dreams as are both of the jellyfish babies. And this light blue colorway is called Irish Mint. The color of the other jellyfish baby, the pink jellyfish baby, is called Powder Rouge. Yay! I love those guys. Okay, Courtney, we, we might have to speed it up a little bit because I have 14 amigurumi that I've completed in a week, and so far I've described exactly three of them. But let's give a round of applause for these three. <laughs> I know, like, I don't want to applaud, like, myself or my own work, like, but I'm really thankful to have made them. <laughs> yay! But, jellyfish babies, yay! Okay, so I'm trying to think the next, um, the next amigurumi that I made, I believe, was also octopus number three, and I made him in powder rouge. Ding, ding! <laughs> I'll put him here and maybe do a, a sound effect. <laughs> He's cute. I did actually do the tentacles more correctly on um, Octopus number three in Powder Rouge. I, I kind of like, maybe it's just the blue colorway that I like better though in the Irish Mint because I feel like it makes their little, their little eyes like kind of pop or I, I don't know. Like he, I just feel like he's adorable. And the fact that he's like a little bit shorter too, maybe because I didn't do the tentacles correctly. Aww, but we're not here to describe or compare which octopus is more cute. You guys are both lovely. Yay. Okay, so um, we love the little baby octopuses from All From J. That is um, baby octopus number three. And you can find her tutorial to make these guys linked down below along with the jellyfish babies and any other pattern um, slash tutorial that may be discussed later in this uh, show. So the next amigurumi that I made this week was, I'm trying to think, was, I believe was the whale. I think I made um, the whale next and I'm just gonna put some pictures of him up on the screen. Um, now, 
This was the first amigurumi that I made with this chunky yarn. And so honestly, truthfully, I didn't give too much thought into which hook I used. I think I was just like pleased with myself that from when I was trying to learn in 2022, I had purchased a chunky uh, hook suitable for chunky yarn. And I was like pleased with myself that I had that already. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna use this seven millimeter hook. And so I used the seven millimeter hook to make the whale and I'm a little, I feel like his, I feel like you can definitely tell in the stitches because when you're making amigurumi, what a lot of amigurumi makers will tell you is that concerning your hook, you want to size down like a couple sizes from what you would usually use. And you know, I think it's different for everybody because everybody has different tension. But since then I've started using um, I think a hook size, it says, okay, all right, if you know something about crochet hooks, you'll have to help me out because on the hook it says 5.75 and yeah, I think it says 5.75 and when I enter it into Ravelry though, that's not a size that comes up, so it's like between I and J, I think. Anyways, it's one of those metal like boy crochet hooks. Uh, the company is like B-O-Y-E, just, just a very standard run of the mill kind of a crochet hook. Um, but I used that um, instead on my like preceding amigurumi that I made with a chunky yarn. Oh, and I should mention that the chunkier yarn that I'm going to be using for the rest of the amigurumis that you see here in this video today is from a single, um, a single, I wouldn't say skein because it is a pack, a single pack of Ogo Bernat Blanket, Bernat Blanket Ogo in the colorway monochrome. Um, I picked this up at a discount store near where I live and it was deeply discounted, okay? So I was very, very pleased. Got the thing, the whole thing for $5 and there's about 70 yards, a little over 70 yards, I believe, for each colorway, and there's three colorways, okay? So I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, this is, this is good, this is good, because I think I could buy a single skein of chunky yarn from like a website, and it would definitely cost more than like $1.75 or however much a third of $5 is, right? Yeah. <laughs> So um, feel free to, you know, uh, nitpick my math in the comments, like just let me know. <laughs> like, Well, actually it's this amount, but that's a third of $5. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for it. Like I'm pleased to hear it. Um, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, I think I want to say the next amigurumis I made, I don't have a picture of because I guess I didn't want to get too attached. I knew that they were probably going to sell and um, I was planning on selling them at a craft market, but that's all right. I went ahead and put them on consignment at a handmade goods store near me so that I can start saving um, to rent a space and sell more and sell more things. Although when I rent a space, um, yeah, so that I can rent a space and sell more things, um, I was I was advised that although she'll take the um, amigurumi today or yesterday rather when I brought it by on consignment, I was advised not to um, continue to make a lot of amigurumi to sell in that space because there's already people that do that there and she wanted to protect their income earning potential. I think what I'm going to stock my space with at this uh, market, I should say, it's it's like a handmade goods market basically um, where everybody like rents the space and you can, you know, leave your things there and go on a range and make it look the way you want it to look, but you don't necessarily have to be there all day, every day. Of course not, like it's mostly for them to sell it for you, right? Um, so what I think I'm going to stock my uh, wall space with over here is like scrunchies, um, things that are quick to crochet, and I'm very excited because I did um, receive a shipment from Premier Yarns um, and some bright Premier Chunky, Parfait Chunky mostly, and some very bright, beautiful colors. I also got some Premier Chenille Basics. 
and um, I was able to make some bright, beautiful scrunchies with those. I'm sorry I don't have pictures of the baby octopuses that I made with this soft plushy yarn here. I'm so sorry I didn't take pictures of those for you guys. Aww. Um, but I will say I did make them with Jade's tutorial. Um, I, goodness, I think her tutorial was just Kawaii Baby Octopus because I know that the other one that I kept linking was octopus number three. Um, so I'm gonna look up exactly, I think she, I'm gonna look up exactly which tutorial this octopus is. Um, I think he's the first one that she did though. So I think he's just called Kawaii Baby Octopus. Whatever, whatever the name though, it will definitely be linked down below. Um, I made both of them with the, um, with the white on the Bernat Blanket Ogo Monochrome. Uh, colorway <laughs> pack of colorways um so they're both like soft and plushy and white and adorable and um the stitches look good because i downsized my hook um this was also the pattern that taught me to make the bobble stitches which were so much fun and honestly you know it's a new skill but you don't have to be afraid to learn it because the jay just like walks you through everything so perfectly um i love her voice because it's like very calming um so yeah if you're looking into crochet do give those a watch um and i hope that they help you like they did help me um okay so the next thing that I made, amigurumi wise, uh, this one's kind of exciting. Are you ready? Yay! Okay, um, I made him from a free pattern. The free pattern is on Instagram. It's called True Totoro, which is for blue Totoro. And he is based off the blue Totoro, although I used um, gray because I didn't have any blue. I had only, the, as far as chunky yarn was concerned, I had only the Bernat Blanket Ogo monochrome colorways to work with. And I think he, you know, so he's based off the Totoro that is the Chu Totoro, which is blue, but we used the more traditional Totoro colors for him to just be like a little Totoro, like a little, a little baby, like, a little Totoro and I know if you're part of that like fandom like please don't come for me <laughs> like um yeah but I made this guy and I gave him to my kids um I think he's adorable definitely when the kids um when the kids saw that I was working on a Totoro they were like are you gonna sell this and it was like I think he should be for you <laughs> Um, so that was really nice. Um, okay, so I started him on Friday night, yes, and I'm trying to think, what did I make on Thursday? I think I made the whale on Thursday. Yeah, oh, and I also made this turtle too. I think I might have made this turtle on Thursday also. I'll throw this turtle up on the screen. Um, the turtle is from Avocado Handmade, and she does have a tutorial on YouTube, so I'll link that down below. Um, so hold on, how many Amigurumis is that so far? We have the Totoro, Totoro, Whale, Turtle, the two Octopi, which I made on Friday, and the Whale and the Turtle, which I made on Thursday. The, um second Kawaii Octopus number three in the Hobby Hobie colorway powder rouge which I made on Wednesday the three guys which I made on um Tuesday and so that is about nine and the nine ten eleven twelve thirteen Well, I'm definitely getting out of order based on how I made these. Um, okay, but so we're going to have to backtrack a little bit. I'll sh throw up a picture on the screen of this peep bunny that I made for my daughter, Kennedy. 
it is um, probably one of the first things that I made as well. Um, I might have actually made this on Tuesday night after learning how to crochet that day. And um, truthfully, the way that I made him, perhaps because I used number four weight yarn or perhaps, perhaps because I was missing, um, perhaps because my count was a little bit off, um, it, I felt like he needed a little something. And because um, his, like the shape, it didn't seem quite as like cute or fluffy or like full as um, I thought it would be. So I tied, I took some scrap yarn and I tied like a little bow around his neck. And um, yeah, <laughs> I, I think he looks perfect. I think he looks great. Um, thumbs up for that. And that tutorial will be linked down below. So then the next one that we have to show, we're back on track now. The next one that we have to show is actually going to be Grayscale B. And I made Grayscale B before, okay, so I made Grayscale B I think on Friday. Yeah, I think I made Grayscale B on Friday. Okay, so before I started on Todoro basically. And um, Grayscale B is great. He's um, made from the tutorial mini Rainbow B and I will link that down below. It's also a tutorial by All From Jade. Um, he's wonderful because I was able to use the colors that I had and like I thought like kind of a really interesting and playful way um, because he's kind of like a playful take on the idea of there being like a rainbow bee and like all the other colors that I'd like to use being like very bright and saturated. I thought like, well, right now I have this monochrome, this monochrome palette set. Like, let me use that to the greatest effect <laughs> that I can. And I feel really pleased with this. Like, I love the idea of him being like a grayscale bee when the tutorial especially was for rainbow bees. So, yay. <laughs> Big ups to him. All right, there you go. Rainbow bee, grayscale bee. <laughs> I will link the tutorial down in the description below. Okay, um, so now we are on to our final three that I'm going to tell you about. Um, okay, so the first, now with these, I'm going to go in chronological order. So the first one that I'm going to put up on the screen is um, my scrump Zoom Zoom. And you might have seen I posted him in a story on Sunday because I was so excited after we got to make him. I was so excited. Um, and I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures because I think you have to see him from different angles. And also the pictures that I have are way better than any lighting. Like if I showed you him here, the lighting wouldn't be great. So I'm just going to show you the pictures that I have. And um, I'm going to show you all the different angles of him. Um, the body is basically a free pattern. I knit the body from a free pattern on Instagram. And I will uh, put the tag of the Instagram creator down in the description below. I believe it's, I believe you pronounce her name Manua Stuff. It's M-O-N-U-A dot S-T-U-F-F. And just put the little at sign when you search her name into Instagram and she should pop right up. Um, it's a free, a free pattern rather for um, unicorn Zoom Zoom. So, if you're not familiar with the Zoom Zoom, they're like the little Disney, um, I think it's a toy that Disney makes. And basically their bodies are all essentially the same shape. So I thought about that and I was like, I could totally make a scrump Zoom Zoom with um, this unicorn Zoom Zoom pattern, right? So I followed the pattern for the unicorn Zoom Zoom for scrump's body. I just used a colorway that I thought would be more suitable for scrump. And it ended up being a scrap colorway that I had for leftover. It ended up being like a scrap colorway I had. Like I didn't have very much of it, just like a little ball. 
But one thing I love about crochet is that you can use those little scraps to make these amigurumis in great effect. It feels like you used so much more. Most of our projects in knitting take more time. It definitely feels like, wow, I can make a whole animal with it just a little scrap. Honestly, I couldn't believe that I had this perfect scrap for, to make a scrump zoom zoom. And I'm a little bit like impassioned about this and I'm sorry if I'm like talking a little bit faster. I think I need to slow down a little bit, but it's been years that I've wanted like my very own scrump and I just haven't, I haven't gotten that yet. And, um, but I definitely remember as far back as like 2019 seeing that um, some people were starting to make like scrump clay earrings or um, how, well really I started to see how Lilo and Stitch had inspired like people that were making things on like Instagram and on Etsy and even, even just like the companies behind these characters were really kind of playing this up and making more merch. Um, and yeah, I, I loved that. <laughs> um, so I guess I've had this like desire to make something that's Lilo and Stitch themed or, you know, particularly a scrump since 2019. And I'm so glad that I've finally been able to bring this to fruition with like a tiny amount of uh, yarn that I had left over from a project that I worked on earlier this year. So um, here Scrump is in the perfect uh, spa colorway from the Yarn Bee Velvety Smooth. Um, again, I don't recommend Hobby Lobby really for anything, but it is all we had in our community. And um, I just needed a quick win. I needed to go in and buy some yarn that day. So, um, so I did and you know, am I planning to go back to Hobby Lobby? No, but um, yeah, with what I had, I think I was able to make something amazing. So here's Scrump and um, I'm actually really pleased with the details of the face. Um, I posted a reel on Instagram and a short on YouTube just showing me like in the process of stitching her face on um, and it was so like detail like honestly it looks very it doesn't have to be you don't have to put this much pressure on yourself but for me I wanted it to look perfect so I was very focused on doing this <laughs> um, and so it's like a relief you know when I'm done and I'm like oh that came out well like thank you and I do owe credit to my daughter for helping me, um, for encouraging me to add a couple of details that otherwise I would have left off, specifically the blonde tufts of hair at the top behind her bow. I was gonna just leave it at a bow. I'm glad that um, my big kid inspired me to do that. And um, when I turn her to the side, you can see her necklace also. My daughter said, we looked up a picture of the scrump zoom zoom specifically to see if it had the um, or in the yellow hair, the blonde hair. Um, so this is just the Disney manufactured scrump that we looked up to compare it to. And we saw that she had the yellow hair. So my daughter was like, you have to put in the yellow hair. And then we saw also that she had, when she turned to the side, we saw also that she had the necklace. And my daughter said, you know, that I had to do that too. And I'm pleased that she made these suggestions. And um, now just for me, I know it's something that looks exactly like the like Disney scrump zoom zoom. Disney, I don't, I don't want any beef. Like, you know, I'm not trying to sell these. <laughs> like, okay. Um, but yeah, I love, I love my scrump zoom zoom so much. Um, and I know, like, I know, like we're handmakers, so we don't have to make something that looks manufactured, but for it to be related to this like beloved like character and this beloved character and her doll, like for me, it just adds a little bit of magic to it. Like, hey, I made that and it looks exactly like Scrump. Like if I saw it out of the corner of my eye, I might think that it's just the manufactured one. <laughs> um, yay. So that makes me really pleased. And I mean, you could argue that it's not exactly like Scrump, you know, because of the ways that I did the details on the eyes are a little different. 
and to that I will say it's about the spirit behind it and not necessarily that you got all the all the same colors of the buttons on the eyes like exactly the same and I mean for her other eye I didn't even add a button I thought that it would look better if I just did the stitches like just did the um, little X to show the like the button stitches like basically how the buttons are sewn on um, and confused with it. Okay. Um, yay. Thanks for listening to me talk about scrump. Um, I definitely had a lot to share. That was very like heartfelt. So, um, just thank you. I want to say thank you to like anybody who helped make this pattern, like this dream of mine become a reality. Like, I just want to acknowledge your presence in our lives and say thank you so much. Like, thank you. You have no idea how thankful I am to, like, each and every person that has come along our path and, like, all the beautiful places that we've been and been, like, offering a smile or a helping hand, like, or just, like, offering a smile and just, like, a gesture of grace. So, like, thank you guys so much. Um, you know, we have been through a lot to be here and I'm so thankful to like anyone along the way who has offered some, um, some help or in, even in just an encouraging word or a smile or a note of kindness. Okay. Um, all right. So the next one I'm going to show you is this frog. Um, it's the second to last amigurumi that I made this week. And um, he's a white frog because again, in this, um, when I made this, I was still working from my monochrome burnout blanket Ogo. And um, I really like it. Uh, the kids are pleased with it. This one's for the kids. He's not for giving away. Um, I decided to stitch his mouth on using some scrap yarn um, left over from my a uh, Pineapple Coast advent calendar that I ordered from Marina at Pineapple Yarn Company in 2022. Um, Marina, if you've heard me talk about Marina in any of my other videos, you know that she's no longer dying, but her colorways are my absolute favorite. And I'm really glad I was able to find kind of a long scrap in that little plastic bag of scraps that I kept um, that would be suitable for stitching on his little mouth. Um, I did go over it twice. I did embroider it twice because this yarn is a number three weight DK yarn and the Bernat blanket that I used to make his body is a little more chunky. So I went over the embroidery stitches twice that they'd show up. And um, again, I'm really pleased. Um, my kids have fun with this guy. They say because he's a frog, he can do like jumping and like cool things. I'm like, great, maybe I'll make you more frogs. Well, they did ask for more frogs and I said, okay. Um, so there you go, and that brings me to my last amigurumi, which is another one I have with me here today. Let me grab him real quick. It's not my last amigurumi, but he's the last one that I've made to show you in this video. Burn, 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 burn. Now, you may recognize him. Um, the pattern may seem kind of familiar, and I think it's because there are, like, this is kind of a popular style of, um, like, a kawaii dino am amigurumi right now. Um, there's, I've seen a few different tutorials, I believe, and definitely a couple different patterns on how to create a dino that looks similar to this. Um, the one that I used, it will be linked down below. Um, I'm so sorry, I cannot... Uh, I think one of the uh, designers of this pattern is Nicole Crochets and uh, definitely put her the um, tag sign in front of her name if you're going to look it up on Instagram. But again, I'll have this all linked down in the description box below. There's also another pattern designer that's credited on the pattern with her as well. I'm so sorry, I just can't remember both of these designers. I just can't remember the names at this moment because I made this guy last night. And this is the first time I've posted him to any of my social media, so I haven't actually typed out this information yet. So sorry guys, but I will have it linked down below. 
And I'll also have the uh, pattern name linked down below as well for the exact uh, pattern that I used. It's the pattern that I used is a free pattern on Instagram. So if you go to the people that are tagged as the pattern designers, they should have the pattern on their grid. And then you can link and save it to your own Instagram account to find it later. And that's how, that's what I've been doing with these free patterns on Instagram, basically. So for, cause for a YouTube tutorial, you know, you, you listen to the video and they'll show you how to make the pattern for Instagram, like, and save, and then you can come back to it whenever you need to. Um, and also if you're going to make a pattern on Instagram, you do need to have a little bit more of a working knowledge of how to do things yourself rather than if you're just watching a YouTube tutorial and you, if you get stuck, you can see what the designer is doing. And there are some, uh, dino tutorials on YouTube as well. Um, I kind of love this guy now that I'm showing him to you. Um, <laughs> At first, I wasn't quite pleased because I wasn't sure that it was immediately apparent what he was. Although I know that's kind of in the design, right? He's supposed to be kawaii, he's supposed to be cute, and he's not supposed to actually look exactly like a T-Rex, you know? So um, part of it though might have been that I, I started to run out of um, some of my colors here when I was making this guy, which was about perfect because I think I finished up making him right before my um, shipment from Premier Yarn came in. But um, I used the rest of the white and the rest of the gray to do like this little, to do this little stripe and to make the top part of his body. And um, I definitely have some more black left. Um, I did use the black already to make a couple scrunchies uh, for resale and um or for just sale i guess not resale <laughs> um but this might have been the first time i dipped into the to the black in the burnout blanket ogo um to make his spikes and to make his little footsie tootsies to make the little footsie tootsies here um so there you have it that is all my amikurumi wow and i can't believe i still have some things to show you <laughs> Hey guys, all right, I'm back from my eye doctor appointment to show you uh, my knitting works in progress. Um, I say my knit whips, you know, if you're not familiar, W-I-P-S is like works in progress. Um, so these are knitting whips only really because the things that I've been working on with crochet are kind of small and I've been able to finish them kind of fast. And so that's definitely kept me motivated to keep working on them. That's a good segue because as far as this project, my scrappy, um, scrappy boneyard shawl by Stephen West, the pattern is by Stephen West. And um, yes, it is scrappy because I'm using a different yarn color for like now, I wouldn't say each section because if you look at it, there are these sections separated by a garter ridge and some of the yarn colors, you know, spill over into the next section. Some take less than a section, but um, up here I've definitely, since I uh, started putting in the mini skeins that I ordered from Daisy Stitch, and you can go back if you, I mean, I've talked about this so much in my podcast that I don't really feel the need to rehash it. Um, basically I've added in four of the five mini skeins from Daisy Stitch Co. The fifth mini skein is currently attached to my second work in progress, my Dragon Rider's Cowl. I say my, but it's going to be a gift. Um, I'm going to gift it to someone in my family. I think, um, my husband. But, um, man, you kind of can't see because of like the light. Okay, so this is the Dragon Rider's Cowl. The pattern is uh, a pattern by Tannis Gray. She does really prolific color work patterns for knitting. And it's like art. She's very, um, she's very skilled. She does a lot of different uh, types of art as well. Um, so this is my beginning of rounds. And as you can see, the background color changes. Um, so down here, I have one of the colors from Daisy Stitch Co. that I've already added in to my scrappy 
um, shawl. And here, this red color is just a commercially dyed, um, like satin, no, it's a uh, Filcolana uh, yarn. And then up here is the um, fifth and final Daisy Stitch Co. colorway. So I just have a few more rows with this colorway as the background color to do. Maybe I'll be able to finish this up today. And then that way I can add um, this cool background color, it's right here, into my scrappy shawl. So I'm gonna add it into the scrappy shawl as the final Daisy Stitch Co. colorway. And after that, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. I think I talked a little bit yesterday, not yesterday, um, yester podcast, I should say. In a, um, the eighth podcast, I talked about plans to maybe add this cool like white um, colorway with purple and pink speckles from Lola Bean Yarn Company. And so I'll see, maybe I'll do that. Um, I am excited to get uh, back into knitting actually today. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna finish up the podcast and really take some time to work on this. That sounds good. Um, I hope wherever you guys are, I hope that you guys are doing good too. And thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for watching. But most importantly, I hope that wherever you guys are, that you guys are happy, healthy, and safe. All right, bye. See you guys in the next one. <laughs>